Hi there, everybody. Butch here with another tutorial. Nice long one um, this time. I thought I'd share with you how I like doing eyes. Well, these particular eyes anyway, they're, they're very different to typical eyes. These are some old eyes. Well, it's an old eye, I should say. There's a lot of wrinkles and bags and these very sort of interesting sort of characteristics around these eyes, which I really like. There's a lot of um, examples online of typical eyes, you know, like a beautiful eye or, you know, one with makeup or with big eyelashes. So I thought it might be interesting to show you guys how to do something that's a bit bit different to that. And also, you probably find yourself, if you were to go out and draw people on the street, you probably find yourself drawing eyes more like this than your typical kind of beautiful looking eye that you see quite often online. So, so yeah, let's let's get going. Uh, I've got the reference here, so you guys can see what we are doing here. So the reference is actually really dark, really, really dark, and it's very hard to see the subtle differences in color that I can see here. So I might just push that to one side for now because it just looks black. Um, uh, but really, there's actually a lot of different colors in there. Um, there's quite a bit of blue in this eye, actually, which is quite surprising. Um, considering this is an African man, I think it might be because it's... Um, the guy's quite old in this picture, and sometimes eyes... Old people's eyes sort of change pigment sometimes, I think. I don't know. Anyway, this is, this is what it looks like. It's a very subtle hint of blue. Um, so yeah, let's let's get on with this. Um, so what should I do first? Well, let's start off with the whites of the eyes, which are not very white at all in this case. They're actually a very a sort of greyish, dark grey almost. I'd say sort of this kind of colour almost. I think I'm going to lay some of this down just to start with. So this is one corner, that's the white of his eye. And we have this side as well. I've already drawn part of the eye, the outline here that I can see. But I think there's more to it. There's a this is actually the corner of the eye just here. This is the white of the eye. So we've put a little bit of this dark sort of whiteness down. Now we've got a bit of olive brown, 10%. Yeah. So you see, that in my reference here, I can see a kind of um, slight beigeiness in this eye rather than white. There isn't really any white that I can see. And this eye is actually in quite a lot of shadow. A lot of shadow, actually. It's it's one of the darkest parts. Which is why I thought it would be quite interesting to draw as well, because it's very subtle, the, the colours in this eye. Same with the other one, by the way. It's, uh, they're both pretty dark and shaded by these big eyebrows. So now I'm just carrying on with this, just adding a bit more. I've found that when doing tutorials, because I'm going off on one talking, I, I, I can end up sort of being a bit slower with the drawing somehow. Um, I'm going to try and not be slow because uh, I want to get this done and hopefully you guys can see the finished result very soon. Now, this, I've got a few little 
details here. So remember that the whites of eyes aren't necessarily always white or light. They're, they're the color that they are, that you see, basically. You know, the, the, you have to look at the colors that you see. Don't worry about what you think it should be. Look at what the colors that you, you can see are. This is a nice one. This is a nice bluish gray. It's a slate gray, luminance slate gray. Just going to start adding the iris here. Just the outside of the iris where there's a slightly dark line around it. This is actually all kind of slightly darker. But I'm going to use this slightly grey blue here on the iris because the eyes are slightly grey and slightly blue. The rest of it is more brown, the rest of this this sort of this side, so I'm probably going to use a different colour there. Now, this is uh, Payne's Grey, Luminance Payne's Grey. Quite a bit lighter than the Polychromos Payne's Grey, I find. Where's the Polychromos Payne's Grey? There it is, there's the Polychromos one. Pretty dark. Good to use them together, I think. You can see, again, this is blue, but I'm not just putting down blatant blue. Um, this is in shade, this eye, so the colour has been somewhat darkened. And so this is a kind of greyish blue that we're making here. The pupils are very nice and big as well, so there isn't a huge amount of iris uh, to be playing with. As you know from my other tutorials, I, I like to sort of get a sort of rough foundation, rough sort of uh, basis of what's going on and then add more to it as time passes. So this is the other side of the iris. Put another base here like so. Okay, now the middle is overwhelmingly dark, so I think I'm going to maybe do that in a bit. I'm just going to carry on doing these outer bits, really. Nougat. It's a good one here. Adding slight darker shading into the white of the eye again. If you can call it the white of the eye, it doesn't look very white here, does it? And I think I'm going to just, uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to get this uh, sepia just to give us some definition here, because Normally I don't like adding really dark lines first, but this eye is very dark. This this sort of the edge of this brow which hangs over the eye, the very edge is very, very dark. So I'm going to add that so that we can just have a nice little border that we're working off. This remains dark all the way up here, so 
It's a very, very dark area that we're working on here. And eyes can be dark, and I wouldn't be scared of uh, doing a reference with dark eyes, you know. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen my Jack Nicholson uh, portrait, but that's got, you know, he's got the darkest eyes in that portrait. You can barely, barely see them. Um, but it just looks sort of, it's just kind of effective. It kind of looks a bit scary and cool. I do like dark eyes. Now, because this eye is... Um, quite blue. I don't know if you have remember my videos on using dark colours. Because this eye is quite blue, the, the dark colour I like to go to now is indigo. Dark indigo. So it kind of helps really. Um, just adding that slightly blue blueness into the dark parts of the picture. And obviously it's not going to be all indigo blue because it is very blue still. But I think, you know, combining indigo with sepia is a good way to go if you're doing something which has any kind of blue near it. And you need to create a nice natural looking shadow. So I'm just going to sort of put a very rough sort of basic layer of this indigo. Bearing in mind where the pupil meets the iris. some sepia in here. I like the combination of sepia and dark sort of indigo. It's almost like a dark sea. Deep dark sea. So let's just give this a nice coat. bluish greys on the go. Let me put these around here as well. So now we've kind of got a really nice basic uh, layout of what we're doing here and we can just continue adding details more and more details until we're happy with it this is obviously nowhere near complete this eye this is quite a light this is called steel grey this one
Hmm. Right, there's some grey in here as well. It's not quite dark all the way through. So I'm just going to put a bit of this bluish grey in his eye. So we're slowly getting more and more definition. I'm just going to add this corner of his eye here quickly. It's just roughly. Very dark indeed. Very, very dark. <laughs> Need to be careful to not add too much of this lightness. Because it will look weird. So. Well, you know, I guess part of me is thinking, oh, you know, that doesn't look that great, does it? Well, things never look great uh, until they're finished. You've got to keep on telling yourself that, you know. Especially when it's something that isn't uh, very obviously sort of detailed or something that isn't just this marvel to look at you know sometimes what you need to do is be subtle and that could mean something by itself looking a bit odd 
not quite right, maybe. But it's very important to be able to get over that and don't get hung up on that. Be to just trust that when you're finished, it will look right. And if you're not happy with it, you can always go back and change it, remember? So it's good to think that way, really. And um, and to just wrestle with your drawings. Wrestle with them until you're happy with uh, where they are. Bit of wrestling going on now, actually. Not too much, really. Just making sure this is... going to look okay. I just want to make the darkness of this eye correct all across here. So it's a bit darker here and I'm just going to darken this part as well before I start adding highlights that I can see. outline and sepia good old sepia <laughs> um, notice I haven't actually put any black down yet I like to use it last so if you can get something looking the way you like without black then when you do add the black it just makes it that much richer. I think sometimes picking out subtleties in uh, something quite basic is actually harder than drawing something quite complex like all this sort of um, wrinkled stuff here, all these wrinkly bits. I think um, that's another thing to hone your skill at, looking at something that doesn't look very detailed necessarily and being able to draw out every last, every last little thing in that area. I think that's part of, that's probably key to really becoming a better draftsman and uh, painter, colorist, however you want to call it. Um, So I think doing this kind of thing is actually quite good practice. <clears throat> because, you know, something obviously detailed has so many features for you to latch onto. You know, it's, it's almost easier, I'd say, to get that kind of thing right.
I'm just going to add this as a base here. There's also a bit of, a bit of this going on over here as well. Yeah. Just as a rough thing for now. I'm going to go back there in a bit. Once I'm done with this very, very dark eye. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Okay. <clears throat> so, what can I see here? What else can I see that I've missed? There is very fine dark dark line just here just emphasizing the edge there but not quite and this 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 dark line here is also another interesting one adding a lot of detail to the eye just there. So this definitely needs to be darkened. few other little details added as well. there especially <laughs> the edges there just need to go a bit darker I'm going to keep these subtle little glints in his eye Now, I'm going to, I think I need to now, um, add these pretty extreme highlights that I can see. Yeah, I'm going to use a different um, electric eraser here. This is... This is a slightly more, it's more abrasive, this one. The motor's faster, and also the rubber ends that I've got for it are very, very coarse. And um, the, this is, I mean, I like using this one for, if I need to get something really white, out of an area that's very, very dark. Just sharpening it up here, you can see. 
Not the cheapest electric eraser, this one either. So there we go. I've got this this electric eraser here. It's a Denkeshi or something. Um, it's faster, but not as accurate because the tip vibrates a bit too much. Um, perfect for getting back to the white of the paper, though, if you need to go really, really far back into the paper. So here we go. Look at that. And we've got another one here. Another little dot. And a subtle bit just there. Okay, that's enough. Um, <clears throat> now, just going to tidy it up. This is actually quite blue around it. So I'm just going to add a bit of blue first to tidy up the edges. And just to make them a bit more uh, white, I'm going to add a bit of white in there as well. So I've got that there. Get some. Now, whenever I'm doing something white like this, um, I I like to use the luminance white because it's more opaque. And here it is, luminance white. Sharpen it up nicely. Right, so let's just get this down to the size it's supposed to be. Not quite right yet. And then I'll add the white in. Yep, I'm going to add the white now. <laughs> so there, we've got a nice chunk of white there. Another little chunk here. And there's a slightly different bit of blue around the edge as well, which I like to bring out sometimes it makes a nice difference actually that that I don't know if you guys can see this this really subtle bit of blue I've added just around the edge there it's those little subtleties that make all the difference now I think I've unfortunately I think I just let it bleed a bit too much so I'm just gonna take away again Neaten it up and add some more white again. Yep. Now there's a bit of bluish grey here, a light sort of bluish grey. I think this one will be the right one to use. Yeah. Just here. Coming off this. A little more down here as well. When you've done something this dark and you need to lighten little areas of it up, it's nice to use a colour like this that's quite light but represents the, the tone of the area. So this is like a sort of light bluish grey. There. 
I'm going to add some indigo here and there around these dark bits. I'm sorry, these light bits, I mean. So I think we're getting there now. Now it's about, uh, now that I can see the eye better, I can kind of judge the darkness of the areas around the eye a bit better as well. certainly getting there with this so just sometimes good to have a look at it in the context of everything else go back now I think just to make it even deeper and richer Because we've made it quite dark already, it's going to really, really bring out the deep sort of richness of the dark parts using some black. My favourite black, the Polychromos black, which I find actually is a bit blacker than the Luminance black. So yeah, it's a bit bit funny really, you know, it's when you use a couple of sets of pencils, you start preferring certain pencils over the other, and then you can't go without using just one of them. Uh, you can't go without using both of them, I mean. So, you know, um prefer using the what the white uh in the luminance range and I much prefer using the black in polychromos. So That's the way I would recommend using them. Although the, there are certain situations where you might want to use the black, the um, luminance black, if you have an area that isn't as black or, you know, that needs to be covered quickly and a bit more softly, um, then, yeah, luminance black would be good. And... The other, well, the white, the polychromous white, the reason I would use that still is if I needed to put down some white that needs to be quite transparent and take on what's going on underneath it, um, that would be a good, good option. Like here, for instance, I mean, if I wanted to, I mean, I wouldn't use white in this situation, but if there was a very light grey part of his eye, which there isn't, I would probably use the lumin the polychro po polychromos uh, white to bring it out because it would take on the colours that are already underneath it quite well. More so than the luminance, because the luminance is very much opaque and can be a bit smudgy if you're not careful. Almost done with this. I think I'm going to do around the eye as well just to show you guys where it gets to. <laughs> now you can kind of see how all these little subtleties just makes such a big difference, you know, and adding this black right at the end here suddenly brings out all these other areas, you know, all the areas that are in between uh, black, super dark, and slightly darker blue, or, or slightly darker, um, slightly lighter blue, or slightly lighter sepia. So it's, um, 
I mean, I, I can't begin to say how important it is that you use black in this way and don't just dive into using black. Always use it last. You know, I mean, normally I wouldn't even be using it, but this area is so dark that it, it is beneficial to use it. Now, I think I'm going to just do a bit of this bit here, actually. Lots of nice wrinkles all around here. I'd say quite a dark base, really. Um, so I'm going to use some of this burnt umber. Burnt umber is like a sort of very dark yellowish brown. It feels like a sort of yellowish dark brown. Um, nice way to start if you've got a dark area that's slightly, slightly yellow. So just filled that up just so we can get started. Getting a few of these wrinkles in here. Uh, I think before I carry on with those wrinkles, I'm going to just oh, this is doing the thing that luminous pencils sometimes do. And they get a bit scratchy at points. It's the only gripe I have about them, to be honest. The only gripe I have about them. I hope they I hope they've addressed it. <laughs> so we're just almost like tinting this. It uh, pretty much is tinting to be honest. We're just adding very subtle redness to the dark areas, which the skin tone is dark but slightly red as well. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of almost like using this colour on its own, but I've kind of combined burnt umber and uh, the cinnamony kind of colour that luminance have. Notice how I'm not too bothered about detail yet. You know, we're just laying down a basis for what's going to happen here. Um, we're not going to go straight into detail just yet. We have like a sort of shape here. I don't know if you can see it there. It might just be too dark still, I think. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a sort of shape, a dark shape there. I think I'm just going to just colour in that shape with a sort of generic colour that can go in that whole area. Uh, so I can just work on top of it. And I'm being quite gentle with this colour because you, know, you don't want to take up all of the uh, the paper, uh, the, all of the uh, texture that the paper has to to take the pencils, you know. You want to spare some because you're going to keep on going over and adding more to it. So it's just a nice way of sort of knowing what area you're working on. Now we just slowly and subtly start adding some of the details here. And this this has quite a lot of direction. So we're going to be doing a bit of that. 
a lot of wrinkly sort of skin being directed a certain way up and out like that and this way as well kind of flowing with the rest of his eye like so just here there's quite a dark patch which I'm going to start adding again I'm not doing it very hard because we're going to be blending this out adding more around it so always start light and be subtle I think I can use a bit of this Where's the walnut brown? Here he is. And let's just add some more of this darkness that we see just here underneath the eye, underneath the eyebrow. Well, it's actually more like the sort of drooping, it's kind of like a drooping brow, really. Something that, you know, it's just, you only get on an old person, I think. Why another reason why I just love drawing old people. You know, they they've just got all these really interesting sort of uh landmarks all over their skin. Walnut brown is definitely the way to go at the moment. So because I've added that red, you're keeping the color, the colors nice and rich there. You're you're not just washing it out. You know, it's it's good to it's good to notice that there's different colors going on and add them in. You know, because the good thing about pencil is you, you can just keep on adding colors on top of each other as long as you're subtle and you don't go crazy you can really have subtle areas which are filled with exactly the colors that you can see on your reference I mean doing this kind of thing with paint would it just takes so much longer I think I find because if you want to layer like this with paint you have to wait for things to dry you know and especially if you're using oil paint it would take a very very long time unless you're using oil paint you know like Monet and you're just slapping it on which is an entirely entirely different way of doing things but I find with coloured pencil you can really really go to town and with the whole layering thing glazing as you would call it in oil painting. Um. Now, we need a bit more of this yellowed, slightly more yellowing brown to go before I start darkening this a lot more.
And I like using this yellow on the outer edge here because we're going into a bit of skin after this. This is like a quite a prominent shadow here. But the skin after this is a, a very similar tone, but slightly lighter than this. It's actually more like this, this pencil here. Um, yeah, so this, this, this tone here and these two pencils are quite nice to use together. Uh, what's this one? Brown ochre, 50%, and brown ochre, just brown ochre. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of useful, really. That's why luminance are... I, th I find the luminance are much better for skin colours in general, because... They've, it's been set out in a way that artists tend to use colours, you know? Th these are the three brown ochres. So you've got brown ochre, brown ochre 50%, brown ochre 10%. And because of that, y y this is like a gradient that's prepared for you, you know? This is why luminance are better. Um, for skin tone, they've got these kinds of gradients laid out for you. Whereas with with the polychromos, to achieve these three different colours, you would have to blend quite a lot and use several different pencils to get the same effect. So, yeah, I mean that's why I, I reckon luminance. You really, really can't go wrong with using luminance. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, have a go with luminance if you can. So this is an area where I'll be using these three colours, where this, you know, over here I'll probably go from a... I'll probably like have like a burnt umber... Let's see, let's see what we got. There's a walnut brown. There's the walnut brown. So I would probably do this, this kind of order here. These these four colors, there's four, uh, six colors here. So from the darkest point over here, which would be sepia, then to walnut brown, slowly, slowly turning, then to burnt umber, then to this um, brown ochre, brown ochre 50%, brown ochre 10%. And then, you know, to add some more redness to it, I would probably use maybe a little bit of this um, russet or burnt ochre. So, you know, this, this is... I mean, I'm vocalising this, but this is something that's going on in my mind automatically. I'm not even thinking about it and it's really good to get to that point if you can get to the point where you don't think about it at all you just know exactly the color you 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 want you know it's almost like a sort of you're itching for this color you know the color you need to put down and you're itching for it and you can just go and be like yep there it is you know you don't even rely, I don't even rely on it by name really it's just visually i know the color i need so it's good to get into the practice of that um, yeah, that's how you can create very complex colours um, and tones in a picture without sort of frying your mind, um, you know. So that's why I don't really enjoy um, theory too much, because I just find, I just find theory doesn't really help when it comes to actually drawing and actually colouring. Um, I think doing something is the best way to learn it in, in a lot of cases, you know. Obviously, if you're doing something very academic, fair enough, you, you do need to read or whatever. But when it comes to something like this, I think, I think craftsmanship needs to be practised rather than read about. So let's add a bit more of this redness, sort of reddish burnt ochre. This is luminance burnt ochre. And 
good old walnut brown here again. Now that I've added all these other colours around it, it's kind of laying down more smoothly in like in a more creamy kind of way. A lot of people ask me, you know, how do you how does your how do your pictures look so creamy and smooth and and um the answer to that is you know a lot of layering and not being harsh with your strokes and if you want something to look soft and smooth you need to treat it that way you need to do very sort of smallish circles soft soft small circles like I've been doing now for a while and just in this spot bringing out this sort of soft little shadow that I can see here you know I didn't just start by just pressing really hard immediately I didn't even start using this color immediately at first I put a different color down below it then I used this color in a subtle sort of really subtle way then I added more colors around it so it's, it's, it's about building building up the picture you know rather than trying to get make it appear immediately there's nothing wrong with doing that as well. It's it's just a different style. So if you want to, you, you know, know what I'm doing, that, that that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm slowly building things up. That's that's how I'm working here. But if you prefer to do things quickly, or you know, have like jagged edges, and you know, you you should just do it because it, there isn't a right way of doing anything. And um, I, I just hate the idea of making people think that there's a right way and wrong way that there isn't there really isn't um, you can do whatever you want that's the truth of the matter you can do what on earth you want it's nothing stopping you and the moment you have anyone telling you that you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that that's when you just need to stop listening and Go and do what you want to do in art, you know. It's, it's just the way it works with art. It's not a science. You can do what you want. So by all means, you know, I hope I, you, know, listen, you can listen to what I've got to say and I hope it helps you. But there's nothing wrong if, you know, you, you've decided that you prefer doing things differently it's you know nothing wrong with that whatsoever if you prefer using solvents to you know mix your colors a bit more some people use solvents with colored pencils go go for it do it you know this is just how i've learned and how i've arrived to my skill set And, you know, same with, you know, like I say with black, don't use black very often, you know. That's not a rule. That's just something that I do, I like to do when when trying to create something realistic and when trying to make tones that are realistic. I, I don't like to overuse black immediately. I much prefer... You know, having black be the last thing I use. But, I mean, let's say you're not necessarily aiming for something that's, you know, realistic. Or let's say you're just trying to achieve something else, something more expressive. Or, you know, then, then you know, you, you, this, this is the point I'm trying to make. You know, you, you should just do what you like. That's That's the key here. You should do what you like. Don't just do what I say because, you know, you like my pictures or whatever. Um, quite often, liking something doesn't necessarily mean um, y you yourself are going to um, enjoy actually creating that thing in the same way. You know, that, that can be the case as well. 
which can be really disappointing um, sometimes. You know, like I mean, I I have a thing for. I mean, I love comic books. I love manga, and I think that um, for years I used to be really sort of. I used to be really interested in drawing manga or drawing action figures and, you know, doing flying kicks and whatnot and things like that. But I never really... I don't think I ever really enjoyed it enough to dedicate myself enough to actually becoming very good at it. You know, I, I can draw from a reference, but... I think drawing comic book pictures requires a kind of endless, endless um, work into the anatomy of the human body. Uh, you know, it involves doing so much life drawing and constantly just doing life drawing every day, day in, day out, taking photos of people and using them as references, you know, preparing a reference booklet and of various angles and perspectives and the anatomy. And, you know, it's that's what being a comic book artist is. You know, there's... Okay, yeah, you you might love you love action and I don't know fireballs and whatever, Dragon Ball Z or whatever. But the 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 actual basis of doing comic book art like that involves continuously drawing the human body and f uh, sort of folds in clothing, etc. So some you know it's what you like doesn't necessarily equate to something that you'd like doing. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's why I found myself, once I found coloured pencils and colouring, I, I realised that, that what I love doing is colouring and bringing out colours and textures. Texture is something I love. So that's why I'm doing this. And I think... Maybe in the future, if I really, really have a, a thing for writing some kind of comic book or something, maybe I would go into doing that as well. But that, that, and that's the other thing as well. You know, if you're going to do comic books, you're going you're gonna to need to be interested in writing a story, uh, you know, interested in being a writer as well. You know, you can't just write any old rubbish. It's not just going to... Having great art and rubbish story isn't going to really do you any favours. So that's why it's it's really important to do what you what you actually enjoy doing in practice, not just by looking at other people's work and being like, "Oh, I want to do that." Just have a have a tinker with different different types of art different styles see what you love doing i mean what's led what's led me to being good with color well probably just years of painting really and years and years of painting um and mixing paint hasn't really doesn't doesn't really lend itself that much to drawing comic books. I mean, comic books is uh, just it's mostly line work and mixing paint is one of the my, my main skills. I'd say, which is very very transferable to something like coloured pencils. So it didn't take long to be able to use coloured pencils properly for me <clears throat> so people get to where they are with their artwork through different paths and I think the most important thing is to just keep keep trying different things <clears throat> and if you if you find yourself getting bored or not enjoying something <clears throat> don't do it
I mean, I don't, I don't mean to be negative about it. It's it's not a negative thing that I'm saying. I'm just, uh, you know, it just it's just good to be honest and think about what you actually love doing. Um, you know, maybe you really enjoy sculpting, but you haven't tried that. You know, maybe you prefer doing that, or maybe you prefer doing photorealistic paintings with acrylic paint, for instance, or, you know, all, all kinds of different avenues are open to you. But, you know, I'm guessing uh, a lot of my audience here are, 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 are here because they love using coloured pencils and they want to know more. So, yeah, that's why I'm doing these tutorials. But I do have to say that it's um, knowing paint has really helped in understanding how to use coloured pencils. And I, I think I ended up with coloured pencils because I was just fed up with how messy paint gets. It's just so messy and if it's oil paint it's even more messy and smelly and you know it just you've got to have a huge space and you know, with, with coloured pencils, the thing I love about coloured pencils is you can just have a nice, neat desk with some drawers with your pencils and a piece of paper. You don't need any water, you know, it's, it's just really nice, which is why I didn't really want to do the whole mixing coloured pencils with solvents thing that some artists do. Um, not my thing, really. Plus, you can't use a uh, Bristol board when doing that because it's it requires, um, I think, probably stretched paper because otherwise the paper will warp, you know, because you're putting something wet onto it. So we're getting a bit further with this, getting this sort of soft shadow next to his eye. Can't wait to do this brow, this really prominent brow hanging, you know, such a nice expression when an eye, when an eyelid or the brow goes like that. It's, it's a really nice sort of, I don't know, it just looks kind of all wise and stuff. <laughs> um, Adding redness to this as I go on. But also keeping in mind the fact that we are going to blend out into this 10% uh, ochre quite soon past this bit. So I'm using this 50% on the edges, ready, ready to blend out. the normal brown ochre here. Oh, nice and dark. Now, this has now become a bit kind of too light around it, I'd say. So I'm going to knock that back. Again, make it, making it darker. This is actually Van Dyke Brown. I don't really know which one I prefer, Van Dyke or Walnut. They're very, very similar. Walnut's uh, a bit more, got a bit more black or gray in it. Van Dyke's got slightly more, slightly more warmth, ever so slightly, ever so slightly more sort of yellowness compared to the, uh, this is Walnut here. And this is a Van Dyke. I mean, this is this is one of the things with polychromos. There's there's so many pencils like this, which are so close to each other. It's it's just kind of you know, 
almost seems like a waste that they've they have two separate lines, which is why I really like luminance because they they have every color is quite distinctive. Still, if you want a dark brown area that is slightly yellower, use the Van Dyke. If you want a dark brown area to be one step lighter than sepia, then use Walnut. So I'd probably use Walnut to sort of add these little lines, but the Van Dyke is really good for adding a sort of warmer dark brown, if you will. <laughs> Uh, I think it's an important skill to have if you want to be colouring, uh, be a colourist of any kind, to be able to spot things like that, you know, be able to see, you know, let's have a look at what colour we've got here and what colour we've got here. And, you know, what's the difference between these two colours? I think it's quite, e it's, it's quite difficult to see the difference if you haven't mixed paint. But if you've been mixing paint... Um, for quite some time, it's it's quite easy to see because you'd be probably like trying to match these colours when you're painting. And if I wanted to achieve this colour, I would make a brown with a tiny bit more yellow in it than this brown. And, you know, once you know that, then you know how it applies to the picture that you're doing. This area is slightly yellow around the edges and slightly warm and and so if you want to fairly blend this darkness out you'd think yeah I might use some Van Dyke brown because it's slightly more yellow and it's going to complement the colours I've put around it which are ochres and yellows but then knowing that the inner part needs to be really dark you know that the walnut will work pretty well just there. So yeah, I mean, I'd say that's a good thing to try and do. I might do a video about sort of trying to spot subtle differences in colours, because I think that really helps um, colour work of any kind, painting, whatever you want to do. So... I think I'm going to uh, probably just leave that there for now. Maybe add a few little details here. I'm not too worried yet. Got to get that tone correct. But um yeah, I'm probably going to leave that there. And uh hopefully that's been um useful. Uh and uh Keep drawing and always remember that you, know, you need to do what you enjoy doing. Uh, don't force yourself to do things that you don't necessarily enjoy. I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial and hopefully I'll have this picture finished. I've been working so much, it's just been taking forever doing this. Um, I am quite <clears throat> far into it, but... Um, yeah, I should hopefully be done quite soon. <clears throat> and then I'll be doing some uh, pretty different work, I think. I might uh, do some kind of cool sort of reflective landscape-y type thing. Or I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to go with the next one, but I think I'm going to do something slightly different for the next piece. So, I hope you all have lots of fun drawing, and I will see you all next time for more tutorials. Bye for now.